Cool. Won the die roll. Want to play first? Yes, please. Uh, we got to keep... It's not awesome, but I don't want to mull down because we at least have one of our splash colors. And we have a four. And we have some, you know, really nice, powerful cards in our hand. Not awesome, though. Not the grandest of keeps. Got a lot of two drops to draw, so that, that could be nice. Hello, him on Earth. Ooh, white aggro. Could get scary. Um, is there any reason... No. We'll play our three lands out, in case my opponent ends up playing black also and starts, you know, taking our swamp. Not that it's the end of the world with our hand, but a thing. Ooh, the Swift Claw. Two drop. Come on, two. Font is not what I was looking for. I mean, I'll grab it, because at the very least I'll get to, uh, ramp into my Fairy Span Thunderhoofs, but we're taking three right away here. Hydra Broodmaster, though, should do a lot of good work here, because we'll get to make a bunch of Hydra tokens, and in the colors here, I think, like, really, uh, Excoriate and Divine Verdict are the only things I'm particularly worried about. I guess I'm more worried right now about taking a lot of damage early. Four is quite the hunk. I might as well just blow this now. Why not? And I guess I'll draw another mountain. Yeah, can't imagine needing a, a two swamps ever. I guess I don't really ever need two mountains either. Hey, there you are. Mike, I needed you. So we got a nice 3 4 blocker down. Probably have a combat trick. <laughs> we'll see if my opponent attacks in with the dryads as well. If I put only attacks with Swift Claw, probably don't block. Okay, I'll, I'll block with the Oak Heart Dryads. Plus two, plus two things get me, but I don't think I can be taking five points. But actually, if that's the case, then I think I do want to block the Swift Claw. Because then uh, a lot of the combat tricks don't get there, but just one combat trick, or plus one, plus one, or something can get that. Ooh, Frelmication. That's a good one. Then my opponent can go ahead and put the trigger onto the Swift Claw. That was going to blow me out anyway. At least I saved a lot of damage. I just hope that uh, I keep drawing more threats. Ugh, that's not what I wanted. I mean, land is good with this Broodmaster. But it means I'm going to have to block, which opens myself up to Divine Verdict. I'm still going to be taking five a turn until I can monstrosity this bad boy. And how does this work again? Uh, it gets the mushroom bit X, X, X green. So if we can do, we can get a, you know, next turn, we're probably going to have to blow it or have the threat of blowing it um, to make it a 10 10 and get a bunch of 3 3s. It's nice that the mass stiff is down. It looks like my opponent's not going to be attacking. And that way, be able to leave up this representation of a lot of extra dudes means the Crow and Mastiff and all these other things aren't going to be that, that great. Obviously not attacking. We're on major D right now until we can draw some more creatures. But we'll get to have three 3-3s three, three to do a lot of blocks. And this will become a 10-10. Ten, ten. So hopefully those 3-3s three, will eat some cards from my opponent, either combat tricks or other type things. Question right now is, do I want to blow the, high, the, the Broodmaster now? Yeah, because anything I draw... I'm going to want to be playing, and I'm, just, I'm not going to wait, you know, three turns to get more. So, X is three. Yes. Mortal's Resolve is quite nice. We'll see if my opponent lets me attack with the Broodmaster. Now that I have defense up, I'm happy to start applying pressure, but I assume my opponent's just going to tap it down, which my opponent does do. Um, I could also just go ahead and start attacking with my Hydras, thanks to Mortal's Resolve. I don't want my opponent to keep drawing more stuff. And I'm happy for them to trade for any of what my opponent has here. And I'm doing 9 versus my opponent's 7. Let, let's test these waters out. 
because otherwise I'm doing nothing for my turn, which I don't like. Whereas if I can start putting pressure, use this card, I should be drawing more gas, and I have some good creatures to draw into. So Moro's Resolve should help me save a Hydra, put pressure on. Again, if it's a 9-7 split, I'm still far enough behind where this is, you know, a two-turn clock, so it's a little bit scary. My opponent's just trading there. That'd be great. No, not just trading. Mortals Resolve. Hey, I have the same card. Um, Do I want to trade a Hydra for my opponent's Mortals Resolve? Actually, I think I do want to do that. Um, I think I do. Yes, yes, I do. I'm okay with that outcome. I do have to be careful now because there's a Crow and Mastiff, these guys bashing through. But uh, happy to bait that out for this first point of life total. Now I just want to draw a decent creature. My opponent has to kind of respect Savage Surge or Tactics. Forget which. It's not the Satessin Tactics. What's the other one? The un, another untapped type thing. And my opponent does respect it. So this will be nice. We'll get to do this. Maybe get my opponent on a trick here. Tap down the Broodmaster. We're going to do the same attack. Little bit worried because if my uh, creatures do completely go away, that's a problem. But I get to do Artisan's Arrow and Marl's Resolve. Like, I don't want to lose another Hydra at this point. And I have to kind of keep attacking if I'm representing my untapped spells that my opponent's playing around. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kill the Oak Heart Dryads with the Artisan's Sorrow. And scrying will really help um, us to get to more threats, or just some more creatures. What else does my opponent have? What other combat tricks am I seeing here? Johnny's Presence and is now indestructible and would kill my Hydra. Do I want to save this Hydra? These guys are going to trade. Yeah, I still think I'm okay, especially because the 5-3 is going to die. I think that's what's more important to me, is killing the 5-3. Uh, and I don't care as much about this guy sticking around. Bummer is I don't get my Scry. Oh, I do get a scry still. So it still resolves, it just doesn't kill it. Oh, cool. So that's wonderful. Um, you can be put on the bottom, and you can be put on top. Polish Crusher is awesome. And there we go. Trusting the deck that we we're actually going to get to uh, some more action. The Mastiff does get to lock this guy down for a long, long time, but kind of has to be maintained there. Okay, so my opponent's not as scared about the untap anymore. Or maybe that's what I had the wrong read. My opponent wasn't worried about that. Or whatever the follow-up is, is enough to be okay. Life gain, all right. Definitely not a race situation for me, but I think that'll be fine, considering the Polish Crusher we're about to draw, or I'm about to draw. Love that. We also get to monstrosity it at any point. I'm stepping down the Broodmaster, which I almost just assumed was going to happen anyway, so I didn't even <laughs> I didn't wait till my second main phase, but that's fine. My opponent is hopefully out of gas. We've got our, our two rares down. What else is there here? Ew, that... Well, my opponent isn't, can't, can't activate it. That's wonderful. Still a little bit dangerous. It's 
So I'll be monstrosity and I've turned off a 7-7 trampler that my opponent that'll kill the Oakard Dryads will definitely be warrant taking six damage on the next turn. Would love to just draw another creature just to keep some of these uh, three threes and three twos off. My other rare would be awesome. That ain't it. So we'll go to combat. Definitely want to attack with the Polish Crusher so I can just get the Oakheart Dryad off the table. Um, have to be a little careful here because my opponent can tap both these guys down at any point and almost has lethal with like one combat trick. Well, I guess three, six, seven, eight. It's four extra points. So that guy's tapped down. Definitely attacking with Polish Crusher. My opponent can't kill it, even with a double block. And if there is a combat trick, uh, I have Morals Resolve to keep the Polish Crusher at bay. Oh, that's a bummer. Who plays Defend the Hearth? <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, well, a combat trick can get me. Definitely can get me now. That is scary. My opponent... Actually, if my opponent has a plus two, plus two, then that's that. Okay, doesn't, so that's grand. Still, let's see how conservative my opponent wants to be. Not very, which is a good call. But my opponent's setting up for a really nice uh, lethal next turn with a couple of different taps. Ugh, we whiff. Alright. So what has to happen here? How can I survive? Tack in with everything. Again, it's very good to attack with the Polish Crusher because that at least gets the Oak Heart dried off. The problem is, I mean, I have to attack in, right? to try to get my opponent to, like, kill things, because otherwise my opponent just taps, taps me down, and I'm for sure dead. So there's really no debate on that. See what happens here. So we're in pretty good shape. I assume my opponent just goes for the win. There's no reason not to. Because um, even if uh, I have the untapped both dudes, there's enough damage coming through. Bummer. Well, I thought we had a pretty good chance of winning that game. It was a good game. Uh, thanks to our nice rares. But we just got a little bit too much mana. Just a wee bit. Don't want to blame it the mana too much. I don't know. Could I have won that game? It was close enough where I wonder if things had gone differently I could have actually gotten there. This Faint Rally is going to be really nice against my opponent because of all the ground stuff happening. It's just a really nice blocker. I like my deck against my opponent. Do I care about Eye Gouge? No, not really. Yeah, I do like my deck against my opponent. Does Shredding Wind matter? Definitely Artisan Sorrows matter. Yeah, we'll probably see some flyers in the white, on the white side of things. I want to keep it this way. Yes, I want to play first. And we'll keep. Never loving the five land draws, but a nice two and a nice four can't complain about. Opponents mulliganing. Go to five, my friend. Go to five. I really want to get to the finals today. My opponent plays. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm recording here. Ooh, that's a nice two drop to draw. We needed the last game to draw. So we do have a really nice early game plan here. Voyaging Seder. I would love that in my deck. 
Crude Master, quite nice. I think I will wait to play the Leaf Crown Dryad. Is that correct? I don't like doing nothing on my turn, but being able to bestow it, we'll go four. Turn four will be Polish Crusher. Turn five, Leaf Crown Dryad. Turn six, Hydra Brood Master. It's just, it's just bonkers, right? And I'm pretty sure with my opponent uh, playing a bunch of those three threes and stuff, the Leaf Crown Dryad isn't going to do a whole lot. Next turn, my opponent's going to be able to cast a 4-drop pretty quickly. Could be wrong. Could be very wrong. But that's my intuition here. Now what you got? Crow and Mastiff. Oh, well, maybe that was a good reason to play Leaf Crown Dry It Out on its own, because I don't want to necessarily build up so much. I'm very happy to trade my Centaur with the Crow and Mastiff. Though my opponent's not going to do that. Uh, understandably. So like I said, Polish Crusher this turn, Leaf Crown Dryad next turn, follow up with Broodmaster. What's your 5 drop? Something scary, I bet. Ooh! Super scary! Boom! Okay, okay. I don't remember what this guy does. Just shoot three plus one thousand money. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Um, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an aura creature planeswalker. Well, my opponent did the plus, right? So my opponent has a five five now, uh, but can't tap down. So what's nice is we get to do the leaf crown dryad. I mean, we're killing a Johnny this turn, or we're killing the crow and mastiff. Um, so that means we don't want to put the dryad on the sorry center. We want to put the Oh, but it has protection from enchantments. I didn't think about that all the way through. It means I can't target it with my Leaf Crown Dryad, which is a bummer, but still okay. We're going to put the Leaf Crown Dryad on the Swordwise Centaur, attack Ajani. I assume the Mastiff is going to block the Swordwise Centaur. It's going to make things a little bit challenging. Otherwise, I could... Put the Leaf Crown Dryad in the Solarite Center, have both attack Ajani. Uh, the Mastiff could eat my Polish Crusher. But then Ajani is pretty close to dead. So my opponent blocks, and then does this on another turn. It's That's pretty dangerous. No matter what, though, this is happening. And just, do I want to trade my Polish Crusher with Ajani? Yeah, of course I do. Even though it leaves the 5-5 Mastiff around, um, I still have a Broodmaster and other threats, and it's most important to get Ajani off the table. So we will attack with both. I guess either outcome's fine. Either Ajani's dead and the Polish Crusher is dead, or the Mastiff is dead and Ajani is down to one, which is still good, because then we can get him on the next turn. Um, we are attacking Ajani. For sure. And I have Aspect of Hydra represented, which him on Earth is not going to care about. Alright, so opponent wants to keep Ajani around. That's cool. I was still happy with that Centaur chain with the Mastiff before it was a 5-5, five five, so that is okay. Uh, next turn, I can make a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, protection from stuff. So I, hopefully my opponent won't have a creature and a huge um, you know, blocker, so the Trample might be able to get through and do the uh, last two points of damage. 4-5, yeah. What else, what other creature do you have? Please be an enchantment creature. Oh, a time to feed! That is no bueno. <sighs> well, I had that one window of opportunity, and it looks like Ajani's going to start taking over here. Can I get out of it? Please tap with your Voyaging Seder. Please tap! You didn't tap. Alright, well, the Broodmaster is still good, and I think we're going to need that power level if there's any hope of trying to get to Ajani. But still... Don't know how that's going to work out yet. 
because I the monstrosity. If these guys had haste, that'd be awesome. The Shiny's gonna be at three next turn, which means the Leaf Crown Dryad won't actually kill a Shiny. My opponent could whiff on cards and just be stuck with his huge uh, Voyaging Seder. Then we'd be in good shape. But there's gotta be like a combat trick or something. Plus the Seder can be a uh, seven eight next turn, so I'd have to like. Well, it'd still work out, because the Broodmaster can get big. Oh, my opponent's digging for another another card. That's kind of okay. Not great. Because uh, it's probably just going to go ahead and grab a creature, right? Villain or a creature or plane. Yeah, probably just going to grab a creature, which will have more blockers down. But that does mean the Broodmaster should be able to eat something off of a Johnny. But unfortunately, I'm only going to have three threes to make. Mm, that's a good card. How does my opponent play that, though? You're going to make one big dude, which would be a mistake. Should just have another blocker out, right? Do you have a follow-up with another three mana? No. Okay. Oh, and I whiffed. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm doing seven into the Hydra Broodmaster. So I attack a Johnny with both dudes. My opponent could go ahead and just eat the Leaf Crown Dryad, but then the Broodmaster gets chumped. You know, I get one of my boards off the table. This is basically like a trade anyway. Um, if I just attack with Broodmaster, it's just going to be a chump from the, this guy no matter what. So do I throw away the Leaf Crown Dryad just to ensure the chump? I don't think I do. I think we just get one guy off the, off the table, put more pressure, and we'll just keep this guy for more chumps later. While we try to make our Broodmaster huge. Because there's no way that like my opponent chumps with the Voyaging Seder instead of the Observant Alcyad. Uh, so there's no way this Leaf Crown Dryad is going to be going through to Ajani. Therefore, there's no reason to attack with it. Definitely need to kill a Johnny. And definitely going to monstrous the Broodmaster, because the only way to get a Johnny down right now, I believe, is going wide. So at least those three threes will be cool. Problem is, again, Johnny's going to be at four next turn, so, oh, man. Interesting. So what does my opponent have that makes this correct? Four, five, six. Is it Divine Verdict? My opponent can have Divine Verdict right now with the Voyaging Seder. I'm losing that anyway. It's got to be Divine Verdict, huh? Dang it. Like, I almost had it. What did my opponent... Oh, Johnny's Presence. Okay. So they are indestructible. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, it just forces me to uh, do this, but that means... It's get, I don't know how I'm going to ever get back. Um, I don't know if there's a more efficient way to do this monstrosity, by the way. Uh, but not clearing one of these off the table is really bad. What an interesting puzzle. Can we get a Johnny gone? So let's assume another creature comes down and a Johnny is at four with like a bunch of big dudes. Oh, so my opponent's digging. Ugh. I don't know which I want more or less right now. My opponent digging for cards or not. I mean, I guess I, this is good for me because then there's the possibility, the rare possibility that my opponent whiffs and doesn't get to reveal a card. Now, oh, well, life can I guess I don't care that much about. Another 3-3 three, three is bad. 
My opponent's going to eat one of my Hydras. Two of those guys will be gone. But we start, you know, we get to start getting some of the big things off the table. I still got to follow up myself, so two creatures will be gone, but Johnny's just ticking up there. Definitely attacking in with all of them. Uh, despite the fact that, again, Cider's going to eat a Hydra. These two guys will be dead. Actually, I think we might be able to get this here, right? So if a, if a Seder eats a Hydra, the Broodmaster gets chumped by one guy, so Johnny doesn't die. One Hydra trades with another. I'm still getting three through, which means the two goes through. Alternatively, Leaf Crown Dryad gets eaten, Hydra gets eaten. Yeah, I think we just attack a Johnny with everything. I think we might be able to get a Johnny here if my opponent doesn't have um, another another spell. Luckily, we're at a high enough life total right now to where even on the crackback, this won't won't kill. Another big combat trick could have a big blowout, but I think I have to go this route. Um, the more Johnny's on the table, the more I'm just getting more and more behind, and this is the one window I think I have to kill a Johnny. Okay, eats the Leaf Crown Dryad, eats the Hydra, Johnny's dead. It's going to be a big crack back, but we have a decent board state. Oh, shoot. That was bad form. Uh, I didn't realize I had enough mana to uh, blow the font. I'm not going to play the mountain, because if my opponent is quick on the uptake, my opponent will pay attention and notice that I tapped a certain way to where I... Like, if this was a land in hand, I wouldn't have it, so... Um, and I don't think there's a lot in my deck where I really want that extra mana majorly. Okay, so my opponent's kind of whiffed here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I have to attack with the Broodmaster. My opponent can have a combat trick, but it should at least be a two for one. I just need to get, like, things off the table. Uh, and start taking over. Especially such a low life clock. Life clock? What's, what the hell's a life clock? <laughs> no blocks. That's nice. My opponent eats a bunch. Oh my gosh. If I can win this game, that would be awesome. Let's see. What else? So you just have to have another dude down. Now I will blow my font. Blow the load. You're gone. Uh, I don't think I really care. We just want to get the deck thinned out. Fate Unraveler's nice. So three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, the Hydra can die now, uh, but we're going to have more follow-up plays. And again, just clearing the board is good for me. And it's at least a two for one, if not a three for one. So I just want to keep putting pressure on. Try to get rid of this Voyaging Seder. Uh, it's probably going to not happen, but the Fate and Raveler blocks it. Or not Fate and Raveler, the Fate and Raveler deals damage afterwards. Um, definitely want to kill the Voyaging Seder first. And then, yeah. Five, six, seven. If this is a 3 for 1, I will be happy. And I am happy. There you go. Okay, so that's nice. What else do you have? That's okay, don't care about you. We can pound through with all of our creatures now and we're such a head on the race that that's good. So that's what we're going to do. My opponent doesn't have tricks. This was the card my opponent drew. And if there was tricks, stuff would have been saved last turn. Trying to play somewhat quickly here so that uh, we have plenty. Of, I mean, there's still 10 minutes, but we want to make sure there's enough time to finish out the match. 
Whew! All right, got through Ajani. That was really crazy and really fun. I'm very happy to have had that gone down. Don't know if I have anything to sideboard against. Do I have any more evasion? I guess some more flyer, right? Blade Tusk Boar would be good. What isn't good? Still haven't seen anything for Shredding Winds. And we saw quite a bit from my opponent. So I feel like Shredding Winds has to go away now. But what am I bringing in? Spiteful Blow, mayhaps? It means I definitely need more Swamps. I don't know if I like that idea. Could just try to continue to get big. Seems to be good against my opponent. My opponent doesn't have a Johnny. I do love the evasion, but I don't think I can stretch my mana. I think if I'm going to stretch my mana, I'm going to play Spiteful Blow more than anything else. Maybe pull out a forest, add in an extra swamp. Maybe the Marauders is good for evasion. Yeah, I think I like that. It also means I don't have to change my, my mana base. We just get another like solid creature down. It helps us get through a little bit. And then if for some reason, you know, this might be a, a trump card against a Johnny. Or just to finish out a game. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. And we gotta keep. Alright, hopefully my opponent has a slow start so we can get some beats in with our centaur and our skull cleaver. That would be quite nice. Two drop? I see my opponent had some decent two drops. No, no two drop. All right, cool. So we are going to be just a little bit ahead on this guy. If I can get in a race situation, I'd be very happy because I'm most worried about, well, Ajani I'm worried about, but I'm also very worried about, ooh, of course, I pull out my my wins and then right away we see a Wingsteed Rider. But that's okay. We're going to put a lot of pressure on my opponent. Might even force a trade here. Take seven on turn three. Yes, please. Cool. Ugh. Don't know if we're going to have what it takes to finish it off against a Wingsteed Rider. Since I pulled out one of my two cards that deal with a Wingsteed Rider. Just don't have a Johnny. Come on. I already battled through a Johnny once. Don't make me do it again. Okay, that's not a Johnny. That is good. Do I play the favor this turn? I still get attacking with a centaur. Ooh, no, we play Polish Crusher, but of course. Um, will my opponent block the Minotaur? I don't know. I could bluff it right now. But I don't really feel the need to. We do have our uh, Intimidate guy later as a thing. Alright, so my opponent wants to kind of go a little bit late. That actually works great for me. Even though Polish Crusher does trump it, uh, we're just going to be a little bit ahead on this board. I hope. <laughs> we just want to keep having our threats down. Five is scary. <sighs> Johnny? <laughs> you stupid cat! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Oh, thank God. <laughs> nice. I mean, I'm not excited for a 5-5 five, five Flying Vigilance, but with Artisan Zaro and all of this, we should uh, be able to uh, get my opponent pretty well here. If that's the case, if I attack in with the Polish Crusher and the Minotaur Skull Cleaver, my opponent knows I have a trick, probably doesn't block. If I do kill his or else, yeah, it's just a 3-3 three, three that could block the Minotaur Skull Cleaver, which is a bummer. Yeah, I still think it's a race, so I don't want my opponent to call my bluff. Um, we're just going to go ahead and attack with the Artisan Sorrow. Or sorry, with the Polish Crusher and leave up the Artisan Sorrow while my opponent's tapped out. 
There can't be a block here, right? Yeah, there's not. So the question is, do I want to Artisan Zero to ensure my scry? Or do I want to get my Ravenous Lucracota up and take another 5 next turn? Uh, I'm going to do the Artisan Sorrow. I think I need to be winning this race, and I don't want the Wingsuit Rider to have Vigilance. So this will be nice. Get our Scry on. If we can get to a late game to where this Wingsteed Rider has to stay on defense, then our hand is pretty okay. We'll be able to get an Oath Sworn down with a favor on it to get a Fate Unraveler out. The Lucre Coda is nice. Uh, so we definitely want the Mountain, right? One, two, three, four, five. So I can do three, four, five next turn. Plus we want to be getting towards this... Uh, we just want lands, to be honest. Oh, we want to be getting to a monstrosity with our Polish Crusher. That's really cool. Question is, if my opponent holds back on D, do I actually attack with Polish Crusher? Because any combat trick gets me. And we don't want my opponent having tons of draw steps to get a Johnny out. Because that is worrisome. Attacking actually is a good thing for me, I think. Does mean my opponent has a follow-up that scares me. Stunt Hearted Warrior, probably with a trick as well. Can I afford right now not to attack with Polish Crusher? Combat trick happens, these guys end up trading. Could still probably get in two points of damage. Problem is this guy's so good. Yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna bait the combat trick out. Definitely means the Polish Crusher is going down. But I think that's what I need to do. I'm gonna win this race. Alright, opponent call my bluff. <sighs> Mortals resolve, no less. This could be the deciding bad decision, but I can't let my... I don't have a way to the flyer, so I have to be continually putting the pressure on my opponent. So I think that was correct. Uh, just realized I can't do the play I was planning on doing this turn, which was Satessan Oathsworn into Karametra's favor, because I'm stupid and didn't pay attention to the forests. That's really annoying. Um, if that's the case, then do I still play the Satessan Oathsworn? I'm taking 7 on the crackback, assuming no trick. I think I'm going to be chumming with the Oath Sworn. Um, mainly because I can possibly play the Luke Rakota and Karametra's favor next turn and use it. Oh, wait, no. Oh, I'm not thinking clearly. I think I'm throwing this game away right now, is what I think I'm doing. So proud of my Johnny win, and then I started getting sloppy. Um, yeah, I think it might be better to wait on the Polish Crusher. I had a few turns before the Wing Strider really got me. In a few draws. Ooh, supply line cranes. My opponent does have a good deck. Dis I mean, even if you take a Johnny out, like it's pretty okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I haven't drawn my uh, my Marauder at all. Four, eight. Do I just take it? No. We'll block. But we're dead next turn. If I draw the Marauder here, I'd be really annoyed. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that that's the end here. My opponent's like, what are you playing for? <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. Panoply! Well, that was still a really, really fun match, I have to say. But alas, let's see if my opponent makes a mistake. Nope, that's it. That is the end. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm still going to post this guy. Uh, I really thought it was a fun draft, an interesting draft uh, in terms of the actual card in the deck and some decisions on what kind of colors we were playing. Uh, plus, I just think that Ajani match was, was pretty fun indeed. So, have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, again, I'm Ryan from manabluff.com. Uh, find me on Twitter, underscore, underscore, rjh, underscore, underscore, or on YouTube, comment, subscribe, and like. Always love reading and responding to the comments. And we'll see you next Friday. Draft on!